Okie dokie. We're gonna be putting together this. I think you pronounce it Soyuz. 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 PCB. Um, by AI03. Uh, it does snap apart quite like the launch pad. Um, first thing we're doing here is just going ahead and putting the diodes on. Uh, not sure how well that picks up, but I do it a certain way where I just put them in there, um, solder, and then clip them off. Uh, the, what you want to make sure you're doing is make sure the diodes are based in the correct direction. You'll need 20 of these, um, and they're just the normal ones we saw on the Space Cat site. Um, normal direction basically means, let's see if I can get a close up. Alright, see the area is like D11, D13, so the negative or black slash yellow band part should match um, where the line is. It's also the square hole, so that's where you want to put the negative. We'll show you in a second. My diodes, the ones that we sell, are, are much, I guess, thicker, and I find them much easier to bend and just kind of work with. Um, but you may prefer something different. So as soon as that zooms, come on, there it is. So you can see D13, the black dot is lined in. Cool. Um, Okie doke, we're back, and I originally meant to speed that up, but then I hit stop recording, so um, basically I'm just going to show you guys what I did, <clears throat> which was install the 20 diodes, as soon as this camera, there it is, nice and pretty, and I mean right now I haven't clipped them, so the back looks uh, like a weapon in deathmatch wrestling, or very cruel mousetrap. So, at this point, <clears throat> his guide recommends to go ahead and solder um, the diodes on. So, I'm going to get my 0.6 millimeter die. What is it? 0.6 millimeter in diameter uh, solder wire. And this is lead free. Uh, it does have 2.5% flux. Um, I don't really enjoy lead free, but I actually ran out of other kinds, so here we go. And I'm not sure exactly how awesome this is going to look. Uh, this might actually be another part where we're sped up, <laughs> except I'm not going to not record it this time. So. Um, but do forgive the noise you may or may not hear if I speed this up because this is going to be my fan. Seems pretty loud, so it's probably, probably super loud. Um, let me just turn this off real quick. So this right here I got on Amazon, I think it was like 30 bucks. Um, it's made by <laughs> I don't know, that's a good question. Oh, the brand is A O Y U E. Um Ow -U? not sure. Uh, I got my tip thinner up here that I just stuck on. So basically this is just um, like a carbon filter. And I like to solder beneath it. The smoke will like the flux smoke will suck up right into this. Um, it's loud, but um, you know, safety first. So I'm also wearing eye protection, which you should always wear, uh, as well as. I mean, some people will say you don't need a mask, some kind of uh, you know, ventilation 
but I say you do. So I got glasses and I got the mask on. And that's just to be safe. Uh, no reason to not be. So here we go again. And mine be loud. What I'm going to do though before I finish is go add um, some solder to the fronts of those two. Um, and I get this question, does it matter what side the diodes go on? Technically no, but with this design um, you can tell they obviously had uh, the thought for them to go this way. So uh, now what I'm going to do is just clip each end. I'll show. So I'll clip each wire, or um, diode rather, from the back. Uh, I'm trying to get off as much as I can. I just put them in this little glass thing while I'm waiting. You can use like a soda can or really whatever. Um, but they can get hot so you don't want to do anything that's going to like melt or release any kind of like fumes or anything. Um, this is actually kind of a fun process, but just make sure you're, I like to do the way, I like to do the diodes the way I do, because if you notice how they're kind of twisted, uh, what that allows me to do is kind of hold on to the top part and then cut you know the positive and the negative and then I'm you know I'm still left with you know the two diode legs which I just get rid of um, these things can fly like when you clip them so make sure again I wear make sure you're somewhere that that's gonna be okay and just I guess try to prevent it that's what I'm that's why I like twisting the diodes it really does prevent it um, and then you kind of just have them both. Boom, right there. Um, these are a little harder to clip only because I used like, free solder, which is not my favorite, but um, I ran out of solder with lead in it, except for the kind that I sell, but I did not want to take some of my own customers potential stuff so just about done here uh, yeah this is a really cool PCB it's a really cool idea when we were doing the launch pad we also thought about doing like a numpad or even like a full size or something with like that snap apart tech um, ooh, I forgot to solder I forgot to solder this one diode uh, so we'll go back and get that one later. <laughs> Whoops. See? I'm really no good at so I mean, you know, I could do well enough to pass, but that's about it. Let's see. Uh, actually, it looks like we missed a couple diodes, so I'm just going to redo them uh, here. Let's see. Did miss a couple. Uh, three, actually. Because I was not paying attention. Uh, you know, interestingly enough, if you do put the diodes facing the wrong direction, you can actually fix it um, by changing some lines in uh, QMK, I think. Uh, something like row to call, but you change it call to row. I'm not sure. 
Um, but if you do so if you go ahead and solder these on backwards, hopefully you soldered them all on the even if they're wrong, hopefully they're all in the wrong direction because it's much easier to fix it that way. Um, but I believe you could really mess this up and still kind of fix it. Only with the diodes though. I would not recommend you do any of that with like the Pro Micro or I mean in this case we're going to use an Elite C which I'll show you in a moment. Um, and most reason is because I'm tired of dealing with Pro Micros they constantly break um, you know for a couple extra bucks, I can use an Elite C and I'll get a Type C port, and I know that it won't break. Um, if you're curious to see some testing we did with those, it's very not scientific, but it does prove some points. Just check out the Space Cat blog. Um, so you can see I forgot three. Yeah. Sorry, this is backwards, it's my first time doing this. Uh, right there. So you can see I got the three. Uh, so let's go ahead and solder those. I leave the soldering iron running just the whole time in case stuff like this happens. Um, I won't do these with the fan on, so if you watch, you know, you'll see the solder, flux, smoke, whatever, come out. I like to have a deep breath taken when I'm about to solder, and then as I'm actually doing the soldering, kind of blow out. So it blows the the flux smoke or whatever it is away. Uh, that's a trick I learned reading really really old forums um, when trying to find something out about soldering. So if I don't have access to my filter fan or anything like that or a mask, you know, that's the least thing I'm going to do now. There's debate over this, but some people say the smoke and vapor or fumes produced by lead-free solder is actually more harmful than the lead solder. So it's almost like, do you want to just deal with the lead or, you know, would you rather not deal with the lead but then deal with whatever is coming up uh, from soldering these? Personally, I would rather deal with lead because you know I can clean up afterwards and sterilize everything and with a mask and glasses I'm not exposing myself to anything um, you know whereas I'm not even I couldn't even tell you what kind of stuff is in this so I'm just right now what I'm doing is double checking all the diodes are on correctly and it looks like Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty diodes, and that's how many there should be. So that's what the PCB is gonna more or less look like on the bottom once you've soldered that bad boy. Alright. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is just really quick go back and add some solder. Um, to this part to the opposite side um, because I don't know I find it just it cuts out potential issues where if you don't get a good connection on the other side at least you'll have it on this side too um, and it really doesn't take long so it's almost no reason not to do this again don't have my fan on, so I'm blowing away from myself as I do this. Again, pretty non-scientific, but it is something I read, and it does help, um, at least some, so something's better than nothing. Uh, that's in most cases. So you'll notice sometimes that maybe you don't need to add some if enough flow, enough of the solder flowed through when you were doing it. But I use very light solder um, and like small amounts, so I typically do. Um, 
be careful. There are the way the diodes are. You know, they're right by the traces. Um, just don't want to do anything silly. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, be careful. Uh, you don't want to hit the diode with too much heat. Uh, I've had I've blown some, and it takes me forever to track down what the problem is. So definitely, you want to avoid the diode with your soldering tip. And we should just be about done, just kind of tidying up here. Uh, depending on if you prefer through hole or SMD, this whole process could be different. I prefer through hole. It just seems it seems easier for soldering novice like myself. Although I suppose I'm probably like getting into the intermediate section although I do solder very slowly and if you're wondering which iron I have it is the Weller uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, just says Weller it's the red one I'll show you guys when it's done so so here we go done and then the other side of the PCB I mean you know you know there's gonna be some solder on it but you do kind of want it to be as flat as possible. Uh, perfect. Okay. So now, according to the guide, that AI03, the next thing we want to do is solder, solder the Pro Micro headers. So that makes sense. Let's get the headers and component side faces away from PCB. So, what my thought is, and this might take a couple times to get right. I'm not very good at figuring out um, like the side things are supposed to be on. So again, I'm using an Elite C. It says Pro Micro component side faces away from PCB. So far as I could tell, if the component side part faces away from the PCB, then this. As soon as I figure, here we go. Um, then it's gonna probably look something like that. And on the other side, um, you'll just have very small area where you're gonna solder the PCB. Um, but you're not gonna solder that thing right yet. You're just gonna solder the headers. Um, yeah, because you don't want to do anything silly. The way I do this, you know, I have a couple these extra PCBs here. You probably stack them, and they'll give you some height. Yeah, see, not quite. So I'll usually take like my clippers or something, something that sits a little higher, and set it right there, so that when I do go ahead and solder the damn headers that doesn't happen <laughs> um ugh. all right let me see i gotta do this again now feel free to do this part any way you want or if you've got different types of headers or i, I suppose you could socket this i am not going to i do have a socket here i'm just not sure about how much height i'm gonna have um so right there is, goodness, the socket I was going to use, which is the round standard one we sell also on Space Cat for like, you know, a couple bucks. Um, I didn't want to make this too high, so um, I am not going to use the hot swap, especially because it's an Elite C. Um, you could argue that you should do it because it's an Elite C, but not this guy okay so just you know solder this like you would anything else carefully but it should also be a bit quicker since everything's right next to each other and again just be careful not to burn anything uh, 
you're not sure exactly how to solder something like this or anything, um, we are going to be working on some guides specific to like keyboard soldering. Um, those will be up soon. The only thing you know I would say is you could also check out any number of these YouTube videos or uh, I'm sure there's like guides on Geek Hack and Reddit. Um, I believe my buddy over at Kibio, Danny, uh, my co-host on Off the Clack podcast has some as well. Okay, so that we're just gonna do the one side at a time then. <laughs> this is the part I, I hate that part because it always falls. So once you get a couple, and you can remove the clippers and then just or whatever you were leaning it on, and go ahead and finish. Make sure you keep your soldering iron nice and tinned. You're going to end up with much better soldering joints. Um, if you do use lead free, you're, you know, the joints aren't going to be as nice and it's going to be more difficult to remove them, like desolder, if you ever need to. So that's just another reason I think the lead is fine. Um, it's not like you're eating it or I mean, just burnt myself on the PCB, but uh, yeah, I don't, you know, I wouldn't recommend you eat while you're soldering or drink while you're soldering or whatever, uh, and you should pretty much be fine with the lead. I mean, I, I clean up everything once I'm done, actually, because I've got not that much room to work with and two cats who are way too curious, so right now I've got gates up so the cats cannot come in here but pretty soon that's not going to be enough and they'll hop over so I always got to clean it it's a pain but I got to do it and here we go other side of the pro micro again once you get a couple you could just literally do the first maybe the first and last one in the row or column however you look at it and uh, probably column and then remove this because you don't need it anymore and just double check make sure it's relatively straight um, yeah okay so now I'm just gonna go ahead and bang these out and you'll notice um, I do try to keep a pretty clean work area and part of that obviously the cats um, but also, I am sorry, <laughs> getting into the soldering. But I'm also very paranoid, um, just for myself too. I, I, you know, I like to make sure everything's orderly and clean, and I don't risk like you know lead or something anywhere. Um, which is another reason I, I'll use these trays. You can get these trays at IKEA. They're a dollar ninety nine each. They work really well. I got a ton of them. I just constantly solder with them, and it almost, you know, I, I've never like stuck the soldering tip like into it, into the, but it's it's pretty thick frosted like plastic. Um, I don't know. I don't think it would melt too much too quickly. So now that that's soldered on, we'll just double check and make sure. That the Elite C fits on there and it looks like it does. So sweet. Okay, so remember, but remember, we do not want to solder that right now because there are two switches that you cannot access once you put that on there. Alright, so what they're saying is we may want to do the stabilizers. So, what I've got here is just some normal. Um, PCB stabs that you can get from Space Cat website as well. Uh, I'm assuming they would go in the normal numpad spots. So let's see. Looks like 
It's like right here. Clip one in there. And hmm. clip two in there. Okay. Uh, I recommend lubing these ahead of time just because it's easier. Super duper easier. And we'll probably do. I mean, I guess we should do a regular build, right? So the other ones go here. And each one of these actually clips into the edge of the PCB, which is pretty interesting um, and actually might not make one of my clips not work. <laughs> uh, seeing as I suppose I broke that one. So let's try this one. And then if that doesn't work, I'll probably have to put you guys on hold. You can go ahead and use any kind of PCB mount stabs for this. These right here, for instance, are the screw-in kind, um, and they seem to fit just fine. We just need the screws. Okay, doke. So, I had to run around and find stabilizers, but now we've got them installed. They're all the same kind, just normal GMK clone PCB stab stabilizers. Um, the one thing to pay attention to is on the corner here, they all clip in the very corner. Um, so if you see, there's e there's not even PCB there, it's just the stat stabilizer. Um, so if your little leg thingies are kind of spread incorrectly or not enough or too much, it may fall out. So that's the only thing I had to go fix. Um, you honestly, I mean... A lot of times you don't even need a freaking uh, stabilizer for for these keys. Um, I actually think it gives them kind of a weird wiggle, uh, and like they kind of sit, especially the right ones. The cap kind of ends up sitting in a little slant, but that's okay. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we are. Well, what I recommend is everyone should have their Pro Micro or Elite C or I suppose Proton C too. I'm not sure it should work. Uh, don't quote me on that. But this little guy, the Elite C, I already flashed this. Um, I will include a hex file that is directly from the GitHub, um, from AI03's, AI03's GitHub. Uh, I already flashed it, it works. Definitely do that with a Pro Micro or anything because if you solder that sucker on here and it doesn't work, that's gonna suck um, and you're probably gonna ruin it when you take it off. Uh, so, what I did was get the plate here. Yeah. Um, they so kindly put, so you know, uh, there's the number pad and this is the bottom of the plate, which honestly. I'm very excited that people are doing that now because I'm still very much a noob when it comes to all this so to to have that extra just like okay I know I'm doing it right it, I can't even like describe this is a very nice actual PCB plate as well um, so what I'm using is just some normal uh, clear I what are they the SMD RGB Gateron Blacks. Uh, it's something I had desoldered from an old board. So let's just make sure. It looks like this PCB supports ALPS, though I'm not 100% sure. I can grab one real quick and we can see. So here is an ALPS. Uh, does the plate fit? It does not appear to fit in the plate. These are some vintage black ones, so I'm not sure. Um, it does look like it supports it on the PCB, which is interesting. Um, I suppose what you would do is something like that, which is really actually not bad if you look. But I don't really like Alps, nor do I have a key set. I do have a key set, but I don't want to use it for this. 
So we're just I'm gonna go ahead and put in all the switches into the plate. Be careful when you do this, you don't want to snap the PCB. The Gaterons seem to fit really well. Um, this one's bent, like I said. These came from something I desoldered, so they might take a little bit of tweaking. Uh, there we go. might be another speed up section of the video. <laughs> and I'm not going to put in those yet, um, the ones on the right or the one on the bottom, just because I know they're going to snap in weird. Um, and I should note that this numpad does not support in-switch LEDs. You, I'm sure, could do some kind of a strip uh, and get that done but that's going to ultimately be up to you. Okay. And all these pins are kind of bent from when I desoldered them. Oof. Big time. And, you know, that's another thing I really like about these types of kits, the launch pad, too. I mean, especially if you're going to use the case it came with. I mean, it's not, you know, 18 bucks. You get a full numpad here. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you gotta buy key switches and everything, but you have to do that regardless. So, you know, I guess the only caveat here is that you do have to solder it yourself. Um, although I'm sure people out there would be happy to make some extra cash and solder it for you, should you want that. Um, so now we've got the two plates. We're gonna line this up as best we can. Hopefully everything will just go right in, which it looks like it did, which is pretty awesome. And I like to put it down and then just kind of press it lightly without messing with any of the diodes or anything. Um, so yeah, this looks awesome so far. I'm very excited for this. And let me put the last couple in. These obviously go in a little bit different because they're on the side. And, but damned if they don't just snap right in there perfectly. Same. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this again. And I, I basically do that for all my boards. Um, and now I'm going to look at it. Whoops. So yeah, they're in there perfectly if it's sliding in and out that fast. But what I want to do is just get like a corner view. For you guys don't pay attention to the stabilizers being kind of ridiculous but um, this is where I'll check and make sure all the switches are in no crookedness things like that because uh, this is when you want to do it all right one more time and let's solder some switches so again I think it's uh, 17 to 20 depending on the layout um, not really, I didn't see a different type of layout, I just assumed the whole thing was only numpad, but uh, apparently there is another layout you can use, so. All right, what we're supposed to do here is solder the, uh, oh, and the reason I'm not doing the reset button here is because the Elite C has its own reset. Um, 
you're using a, I don't know, anything else. Uh, Pro Micro. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Pro Micro, Proton C, whatever. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I do know that the Elite C has it. I doubt Pro Micros have it. I mean, you can short the pins. Um, but here we go. This should be the last bit of soldering. Thank God. Be very careful. Let's conduct better. So then. Here's the next part with the tweezers. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I've seen people all just clip off three or four at a time. I like to do just two, um, go as low as I can, and put my finger right on top like that, and then click it, and just kind of like pull away, and I should have both pieces. And if you got your flush wire cutters from Space Cat, they are magnetic at the tips. Um, which is huge. Uh, I do, there have been times still where these things go flying. Um, so you definitely want to make sure, you know, if you're working in an area where there's cats or other people or something like that, um, you may want to empty that out first. Well, and... Literally, as I was saying it, one did just fly right at me, um, but it was at my chest. So now I'm just going to start doing one at a time, and it might hurt your finger a little bit when you do it, but uh, it's probably because you're pushing the pin in too hard into your hand. But while you're doing this, you should congratulate yourself because you're essentially done. Um... Is this going to work? Boy, I hope so. <laughs> uh, but again, this is the Soyuz, 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 I don't know how to say it. Um, I believe it's a Russian spaceship or satellite is what it's named after. Uh, the number pad kit by AI03, um, who has done a lot of things, uh, such as the keyboard PCP designing uh, guide that I think he forked from an older one, or it could be brand new, I'm not sure. We did talk about it on an Off the Clock podcast, so I'm not sure. Uh, you could go give that a listen if you want. Um, and then I'll do these last two together. YOLO, and boom. Okay, so here we go. This is essentially the finished product right here. Um, what's cool is, and I didn't do this, um, AI, AI03 made this all open source, which is how I'm able to bring it to you on the Space Cat website. Uh, and he even left a big spot here for a logo, um, which I didn't realize until after I ordered it, or there would have been some sweet Moonwalk and Space Cat on there. But since this is his, I think I should, you know, actually what I'm going to do is make sure that the sides that need the little sanding are together. Uh, you may not need to do that, but uh, so let's see. So that's about how much space goes in between there. Um, depending on the spacers you use, you may or may not need to do something with some vinyl tape and just kind of cover up uh, that just so it doesn't short or anything. I know a lot of people do that regardless and that's smart. Um, it's not going to damage the Elite C or anything. It's vinyl tape and it's, it will prevent it from shorting. So let's get some of this stuff out of the way here. This giant bag of Semtech diodes I've got. And and screws from the Space Cat store because I didn't have any. Uh, so what we're going to do here is 
put the spacers on them. As soon as I can find a screwdriver. Tell you what. Some duct tape. Or vinyl tape. Okay, so we're back, and you'll see we have a couple things here. Um, let me get rid of my stuff there. I don't need, at this point, you may want to turn your soldering iron off so it cools down. Um, I brought some, just some regular vinyl electrical tape, uh, 57RJ, cat number 1920. I don't know if any of that means anything. It's just regular tape. Um, this is still my glass of diode legs, which... I like to hang on to because when you do socket or pro micro or something, the legs, um, the headers they come with usually don't fit. So you want to use these legs. And I just got 14 millimeter M2 spacers, but I think 12 may fit. I just didn't feel like having to go back if they didn't. So uh, right in. Let's see. So. Probably the easiest way to do this. Put that guy in there. Now you don't want to tighten these too much. I mean, you want them to be tight, but you don't want to over tighten. It's just a bad habit to get in, uh, especially if you're working with like acrylic or something, because if you over tighten, you'll crack it, um, which I've done a few times, and that sucks. So you don't you don't want to do that. And sorry for leaning like this much for a lot of the video like down here it's just where I'm comfortable the other videos moving forward will be better um, and hopefully funnier I uh, wanted to be kinda serious and respect the hell out of AI zero I, I, I wish I knew how to say it because I feel like a dummy but AI zero three AI three AI uh, three guys done a lot of good work so I didn't want to, I don't know, I didn't want to be too silly on this video, so I literally just hand tightened these, I don't plan on doing it otherwise. Um, again, you could use nylon ones or whatever, but I find they just, they don't work as nice. And let's see, so, so yeah, if you look, um, the Pro Micro will not touch, so I'm not going to bother. But if I use, you know, 12 mil, you can see that spot in between here would be smaller. And then I might throw just like some vinyl tape over that. But I'm not going to do that today because we don't need it. What I am going to do is put four screws here. Um, and I'll have to check the PCB thickness on these. It feels much nicer than I'm used to. Uh, I'm wondering if he didn't do, you know, 1.8 or 2. So that's a question for another time. And again, this was a Soyuz. I'm going to learn how to say this. I promise. I honestly can't believe that worked. I brought a flathead to a Phillips party, but we'll just get them on there and then worry about it. But yeah, these most M2 screws are Phillips, so well, at least you won't over tighten them, or I won't for that matter. We are finishing up here. to be done. I will go through and retighten these just a little bit. <laughs> and there we go. Boom. There you have it. Um, there she is. All of her beauty. And 
damn, there could have been a space cat logo there. I think what I'll do is put a sticker. And again, look, there's definitely... You could have definitely got away with 12 millimeter. Um, 10, it looked like, might have been a little bit pushing it. Um, it's possible... I could have did the Pro Micro or something a little bit, or if I used some mil max sockets or something. Um, the only thing left to do now is put little rubber feet on there, and I've got this these tiny little ones that I use personally. Um, we sell all kinds of them on the Space Cat store. Some are clear, some are black. I like these. Um, I do enjoy when the screws are inset because then you can put the feet right on top of them. Um, but these screws are not. And I don't even know if you could accomplish that with a piece of So, not like I'm trashing it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and like drop them generally right kind of in the same area on the other side of them. Miss up a little bit, maybe I repeal it and <laughs> move it just a slight bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you know, nobody's really gonna see it unless you're doing a video like I am. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can get all different kinds. Next time I order these though, I will get them in multiple colors. That was like the number one already requested thing. Um, until then, I say grab a green one, because green is a Space Cat color too. And who doesn't love Space Cat? And there you go. Done. You do want to make sure the feet stick out longer than the screws do, or you'll have no effect. And these, is, these are damn close, but close enough to work so there you have it um, pretty cool pretty cool build I was I had a lot of fun so I'll throw this video up and uh, put together some kind of guide with it and stay tuned guys because this is the first of many we're gonna be doing a lot more tutorials like this um, hopefully shorter and more more to the point but thanks <laughs>